Hi again, all. I'm just going to introduce you briefly to the Australian Curriculum Science. Now, I imagine by this stage in your program, you're familiar with the Australian Curriculum and the Australian Curriculum website. If not, forgive me. Um, but the science... Okay, distinction they have to get into. Curriculum versus syllabus. To me and to most people working in the academic field, the syllabus is the government that's produced by the doc... <laughs> The document that's produced by the government, the syllabus is, here is what you're required to teach, here is what you're mandated to teach and must teach. It comes from the government, federally or, or locally, and is a list of what's required to be taught. And then the curriculum is what's developed by teachers in schools based on the syllabus to deliver it. So teachers do curriculum development, which is, what's the order that we'll use, what are the contexts that we'll use, how will we tailor this for our students so that we teach our students in ways that work for them but this still meet the syllabus. Unfortunately, the Australian curriculum is a syllabus that's called a curriculum. Um, I don't know that that distinction is all that helpful um, or problematic even in terms of what we do, but um, I will tend to still talk about syllabus as the government document and curriculum as what teachers develop, but we're talking about the Australian curriculum. Um, so I've just selected years seven to 10, which is what this course is about. If you're going to teach year 11 and 12, there are different um, syllabus documents that are national, and then they feed into state, so Queensland state uh, syllabus, doc or syllabus documents as well, and then teachers develop curriculum based on that in senior secondary. And we're introducing new ones of those beginning next year in 2019. So those of you who go on to senior secondary curriculum courses, we'll talk about those then. So what have we got? We've got, we've got year seven, eight, nine, and 10. Um, year 10 is on the next page, so we can just arrow forward to year 10. Takes a minute, or arrow back to, oh, this is an Apple mouse that I'm using and it's back to front compared to my mouse. So apologies if it bumps down before it bumps up and vice versa. Okay, so what have we got for each of these year levels? We've got a level description. This is what happens in science at this year level, right? Um, and we, we can look at those, get some sense of the rationale and what we're trying to achieve. There are in the science syllabus, the three levels that I mentioned before in the introduction video. There is science understanding, that's the content knowledge for that particular level. There is science as a human endeavor, which is the science in society, nature of science, history of science, etc. stuff, and science inquiry skills, how we do science, how we actively inquire to understand more about science. There is the achievement standard, what do students need to be able to do, and there are some sample portfolios of work. So this is what a satisfactory task on this would look like, and above and below. So an average, a good, and a not so good. Um, so let's have a look just quickly at maybe year eight for a moment. So science understanding lists the content. Uh, I suspect you probably can't see it on that screen because it's pretty tiny. Um, let me see. No, I won't bother for this purpose. I'd suggest opening the document on your own computer so that you can actually see what I'm talking about because the, the screen's not working so well. Um, you can see biological sciences, chemical sciences, earth and space sciences, and physical sciences. And you'll have those four divisions in, in each year. So we're going to start with chemistry, and then spend some time on biology, and then spend some time on physics, and finally earth and space. So we will get to refresh all of those content areas. Um, as I think I mentioned earlier, chemistry and physics are my fortes, and earth and space and biology I struggle, I, will, I work more at. I do know them, but they're not, they're not the things that I have been studying for 30 years um, since undergrad. So in each case, you've got a statement. You, you probably can't read it, but I can read it from here. Property, properties of the different states of matter can be explained in term of, terms of the motion and arrangement of particles. So that's something we're going to talk about shortly. Properties of matter every matter from the wooden lectern that I'm standing at that you can't see to a whole variety of other kinds of pieces of matter um, are determined by the microscopic 
molecular level behavior of particles. So we'll talk about that a little bit. And then you can click on the elaborations, which give you more detail. So the syllabus really is limited to this. So for year eight, there are, let's have a look, one, two concepts for biology, one, two, three concepts for chemistry, one for earth and space, and one for physical. So what have we got? Three, two and three is five, six, seven. We've got seven kind of one to two sentence facts that we need to teach science for a year based on. That seems quite daunting, um, but each of them has its elaborations and those elaborations have resources and a whole variety of other things under them and so on. Um, so basically you can dive into this. There are links also to resources on Scootle, um, which is a repository of resources. There's a, there's a lot going on in the, the syllabus document. So the, the, what, but really those seven sentences are what we're mandated to teach. If your students get to the end of year eight knowing those seven things, you've done your job as a science teacher. Now knowing those things means knowing some knowledge, some skills and some attitudes, it means science understanding, science as a human endeavor, science inquiry skills. It means the things in the elaborations as well. But as long as you know as long as you teach the things that are in the syllabus, you have a lot of latitude as to the order. Um, they're listed one, two, three in the chemistry section of the, the document, but there's no, nothing at all that says you must teach them in that order. Biology's before chemistry's before earth and space before physics. Nothing says you have to teach in that order. You can teach in whatever order you want. You probably will be in a department with colleagues, so you'll have to negotiate with them the order, but the syllabus is a large open document, it's quite freeing. You have a lot of freedom as a teacher to design your own teaching experiences. So don't be dictated to by the syllabus, don't be dictated to by a textbook. Don't slavishly follow a textbook from one to, although I'm doing that in this course, so I, I'm slightly hypocritical. Um, but a science textbook, you should be a resource that you jump around in, and I would always prefer to have three textbooks and use resources from all of them rather than have one textbook that's the, the course, I guess. Um, so another other rants that I will probably come back to over the course of the course. Um, so let's let's dive back into the syllabus. So um, the the content description, science understanding, we have, as I say, some of each of these fields, and then the science is a human endeavor. We can open that up as well. So nature and development of science. What is science? How do we get science? How do we get where we are? Um, and use and influence of science, the socio-scientific stuff, the should we have nuclear reactors as part of our energy grid questions. And then science inquiry skills, questioning and predicting, planning and conducting, processing and analyzing data and information, evaluating and communicating. Now you've probably run into Bloom's taxonomy, I suspect, in your program, or you will, which talks about the levels of knowledge, what's, what's easier and what's more challenging for students to think about, how to do high level and critical thinking and so on. And that's really um, blah, <laughs> mirrored here. Um, you might have run into instead uh, Mazzano levels of thinking. That's also quite a popular um, scheme, I guess, idea, theory in education. You might have run into the solo taxonomy. Um, there's a number of different ways of thinking about what are the kinds of things that students need to know and be able to do and how do we work with them? Um, so evaluating is considered to be a relatively high level skill. To know something and make a value judgment about it, you have to know it pretty richly and deeply to make a, a reliable, good value judgment. If you know it shallowly, your evaluating is probably going to be shallow and so on. So again, lots more of this. A lot of today's session is kind of a preface for the course as a whole. It's um, setting you up with some key concepts and so on. They will come back, hopefully not, not in a repetitive way, but in a way that deepens and elaborates them. So, all right, that's the syllabus document. That's where we're drawing our ideas and knowledge from for planning, designing our teaching and our assessment. And as part of our teaching, our laboratory activities and what happens with the students, how the students are learning. Are they learning from us spruiking? Are they learning from small group activities and interacting with one another? Are they learning from video, animation, simulations, other media? Are they learning from 
uh, a whole variety uh, from working in the laboratory, are they learning from field trips? There's a whole variety of learning experiences that we offer to students to enable them to learn the content that we want them to learn. That's probably enough on the syllabus, but I would absolutely urge you to spend some time playing with the Australian Curriculum Science so that you know it well, so that you know where to find information. It is rich, it has lots of resources, it has lots of elaborations, so spend some time getting to know it because it's kind of the, the source text from which you need to teach. Thanks.